So if you live in certain parts of Florida, like the Tampa Bay area, like I do, you'll often see a ground cover with yellow flowers. It's in medians, on lawns, uh, and parking lots. And that is called peanut grass. It's also called perennial peanut or ornamental peanut. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the pros and cons of peanut, where it comes from, and just some tips from uh, my attempt to grow peanut in my front yard. So perennial peanut has a interesting history. Um, you'll see in the right here, I found this yellow flower in my front yard. I dug it up and lo and behold, there are more peanuts in it. So this is an actual, uh, actual peanuts that are edible. Uh, probably a squirrel buried it or something, but there was a peanut that someone was eating and it grew up there. So this kind of peanut is not ornamental peanut grass, but if you see a real peanut field, it looks a lot like uh, what we would, you know, the, the peanut grass that's decorative. So they're very much related, but a lot of it has to do with longitude. So the peanut grass was brought to Florida by um, people at the University of Florida. So basically it, it uh, grows in South America around 40 degrees south from the equator. And where we are right now is 40 degrees north. So they had the idea of like, hey, why don't we take this ground cover and develop it and move it to Florida and make it available for commercial use for cities. So a lot of municipalities around here use it. Um, and, and I'll explain why. So that's basically what happened. So there's different varieties of it. So my variety at my house was called Brooksville because in Brooksville, Florida, about an hour from here, that's where they developed it. Um, the most common one is called EcoTurf or EcoTurf. Uh, that's what you normally would see, but there are, I think, about five varieties of it. And uh, so, why is it so exciting? Well, I was obsessed with it. I put it in my lawn. It was really expensive, but it was a, it was a project that I enjoyed. It was kind of like my thing. People would stop all the time like, oh, what is that? Oh, I've been thinking about that. So I was always wanting to make a, a video of it. I had all this good footage, I lost it, whatever, but um, I'm gonna do it anyway. So the pros of peanut. What makes it so amazing? So number one, um, it's a legume. So it's, it's what they call nitrogen fixing. So there's little nodules on the, you know, basically of the, the foliage and then like hundreds and thousands of little sticks basically and on uh, nitrogen grows or is produced by the bacteria that thrives on that area so it's one of multiple plants that are nitrogen fixing but basically that means you never have to fertilize it which is why this area which bans fertilizer um, between like may 1st and october 1st because the runoff creates the red tide and all that that's probably the number one reason why um, the university of florida promotes it and it's considered a florida friendly ground cover so it's one of the ones that they promote so nitrogen fixing i had this whole plot i never fertilized at one time and it was you know it looked perfect perfectly healthy number two is it's very drought tolerant so besides establishing it which took about uh one month um it, you, i never watered it one time of course we i never we were never in a huge drought here but you know in florida here it goes months without good rains but once the rainy season comes, it perks up. It does not normally stay beautiful all year, um, but it does between usually like April through October, you will have regular flowering of it. So that's number two. Number three, it multiplies. So it's, it's non-invasive, meaning animals can't carry it and you know spread it, and there's no seeds that are gonna be blown. But, so that's the good part but it also can be transplanted. So uh, Florida touted it saying that one acre of peanut grass can um, be turned into a hundred acres because you basically cut it up, bury it, and then it just keeps growing. So it's way easier to transplant than jasmine, another popular ground cover. Um, and so in that way, so basically I had a big part of my lawn 
and then after it was established I cut out squares and moved it to another part of the lawn and then within probably a year or so that looked exactly the same. I could have just kept going and going for years and covered the whole neighborhood with peanuts. So um, number four, it has a long lifespan and so um, that means it's so it's supposedly over a century that it'll grow without really needing to be um, you know re-sodded whereas something like St. Augustine grass is more like a 20 year lifespan. Um, so that's kind of cool. Number five, you can mow it or not mow it. So it grows and then stops. It goes to its comfortable height and then it never won't grow beyond that. So it doesn't itself get wild. But you can also mow it. So if you mow it, then it tends to um, maybe spread a little bit more laterally. I mean, yeah, horizontally, laterally, and then also it flowers more. So a lot of the municipalities, they'll mow it. Um, this is a little clip from the place I work at. They mow this regularly and it looks really nice. It's, it's really quality looking peanut because then they just basically, I, I don't think they fertilize it, but uh, I didn't tend to mow mine except for a few times a year. Um, mow's really easy. Um, it's very soft. The mower can just plow, electric mower can just plow right through it, even though it looks pretty intimidating. The downside to peanut, the main number one downside is it's, it's not thick at all. So it looks like a thick canopy, but if you go like if you were a, a mouse, then it would just look really nice. It would, it would just be lots of space in there. And so uh, you will, I think it does tend to like hide snakes pretty good. Turtles can walk around. Lizards love it because again, you can't even see them, but they're running around in like a little forest paradise. But the problem is, is the weeds um, are the number one enemy. The weeds and the grasses. So if you get common Bermuda grass stuck in that, then it's um, so hard to get rid of it because, and I see it all, I, I'm just really attuned to it around here. So I'll see peanut grass and then I'll see freaking Bermuda just spreading very easily because the Bermuda can go high and it'll just kind of go over and just, um, it doesn't kill the peanut. It's just purely for aesthetic purposes, it is nasty. There are other, um, I mean, multiple, things I don't I don't even know what they were that just that will kind of kill they don't kill the peanut but they block a lot of the sun like vines so things grow so uh, nicely with it um, so if you don't mow then you're potentially gonna have just a big mess of probably six different species so that's the the main downside to it um, especially if you don't mow if you do mow and you get the right height for it you know, and you don't worry about it looking absolutely pristine, then it's not gonna be really a big uh, downside. The, the, the second downside is, is that it's expensive. Um, so the last I checked, it is, it's about twice the sod, because the sod is the best way to do it by far, especially if you have a big area. So sod is about twice as expensive as the most expensive grass. So like it's more expensive than like um, a zoysia or something like that. Um, for sod. So, you know, it's generally people don't do it in giant lawns. They just do it either strips like along the sidewalk, that kind of thing. So that's the only other downside. Tips and things I learned. So firstly, um, you know, you can, you can plant it. A lot of uh, the garden stores will have potted peanut like for five six dollars for like a little gallon pot I don't recommend that unless you have a really small spot because you're not getting a lot for your money you know, like when you like take the dirt off of that it's actually just can be just a few little of the the uh, sticks or whatever you call them um, whereas if you get sod it's just like massive amounts of intertwined um, wood on the bottom and then a, with the canopy on top um, but the tip is, which I learned literally the last piece I put down, I was like, wait a second. You can take the sod, like if you, if you have regular grass sod, you can't do anything with it other than cut it. But with peanut sod, you can stretch it. I wish I, I had it on video, but it's, it's lost somewhere. I looked for, through all my SD cards. 
but I had me taking a piece of sod and then just showing that you can actually make it big. And the way you plant a, a peanut sod is you, you have a thing of dirt, like, you know, you can till it up and you're basically going to kind of uh, loosely just bury it. So I would just like, I had a, a tiller going, put down a piece and then just kind of filling it with dirt, packing it down a little, but it'll take care of itself. Um, but you don't have to like lay it like grass sod where you're laying it perfectly. That would probably work. But I think it would also be a little more difficult to establish because it tends to like, it likes to be buried. The other tip, if you're going to spread it, so cut it into about a one, one by one uh, foot squares, just using a shovel. It cuts really easy. And then just take those squares and uh, do the same thing, bury them somewhere else. And uh, you'll see that, that uh, those, the, the holes fill in they fill in within weeks, uh, at least the visual part, because the canopy will grow together, and you'll over time the the um, sticks will. I wish I knew what the sticks were called. They'll grow together, and then you'll have fully formed sod again. So that's a big tip. And then the second is if you really want a pristine um, peanut, is to use weed killer. So University of Florida, if you just Google University of Florida herbicide for peanut, they they have a list of um, things that they have experimented on. So I tried, uh, it's called, oh geez, Clothodium or something. It's really obvious. I um, And it, it works amazingly well. So I had, at one point, was spending like three hours a week in my plot just pulling out weeds and then I was like god this is ridiculous so one application of that stuff was worth like a hundred hours of weed pulling so if you're not going to mow it then uh, put weed killer on it other than that there's really not much more um, to peanut I do recommend it again for for small strips or small areas um, when it when it's doing well it's really beautiful so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video it's not as good as I had originally envisioned it, but um, I think all the information's there. You don't have to overthink peanut. If you want to do it, then just pay the price, spread it out, and uh, just enjoy it. So, thank you.